Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jill Hansen. I'm a center director here at Upper Iowa University at our Waterloo and Cedar Rapids locations. And on behalf of the university, I want to welcome you to our UIU Learn, Help, and Support uh, demonstration. We know that these are unprecedented times, and we want to do everything we can to help to support you and encourage you and give you tools and resources to help navigate our system um, so that you can be comfortable and successful with your classes this session. So again, we're here to help and support. Our goal through this demonstration is really to try and reduce or eliminate any stress and worry you might have about your classes in UIU Learn this session. So joining me today in our session is Lucas Mogul. Uh, Lucas is an admissions advisor for our national market. And fun fact about Lucas, he is just a couple classes away from graduating with his MBA from the university. And this will be his third degree he's achieved with Upper Iowa. So Lucas is a subject matter expert in the use of UIU Learn. So he's going to join us today and walk us through a lot of things with being successful with the course. Uh, we know that UIU Learn is a really robust system, and we know there's a lot of great things that you can do in here. But our focus today is to focus in on the classroom setting and specific classroom tools and concepts that you need to, to be successful. And we're going to encourage you in your free time to go back and explore more in the system of different features and benefits that you could, you could use um, to even help your comfort level increase with the system. So before we jump in uh, to the training, I want to go over just a couple housekeeping items. Uh, during the training, please make sure to keep your phones, uh, the system on mute. That way it helps to improve the sound quality for everyone. And should you have any questions, we're going to have you put them in a chat box. And I've just opened up the chat box. And one thing I just entered is a video that you can go back and watch about using UIU Learn. So again, any questions you have, go ahead and type them in this chat box. And then at the end of the training, we'll revisit any questions that pop up because our goal is a lot of these things get answered um, during the training. So I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Lucas who will start with how to log into the system. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here so that way we can take a look at getting logged into the system. Possibly. All right, so when you're here on the login, the home page of the website, you're going to go to the top right hand corner to log in. And then you'll scroll down until you see the UAU Learn. And the one good thing about our new updated system is that you'll have a single sign on for both your student email, my UAU, and UAU Learn. So once you put your UIU email address in here, you won't have to sign in again if you don't want to. And then it'll log in and bring you right to your home screen. And it'll look like this. And any classes that you're registered for should pull up right here on the main screen for you. I'm going to hand it over to Jill for a second. Lucas, do you want to talk briefly about the browsers that are best yeah. to support using the system? Yeah, absolutely. So with our system, micro or Internet Explorer is not capable with UIU Learn, so you can use Google Chrome 
Firefox, or Safari. My personal recommendation is Google Chrome. It's the most compatible with devices in the UAU Learn format. Thanks, Lucas. Before we get into all the specifics with the system, I want to talk a little bit about uh, participation in the system. So we know that the key to being successful as a student is to logging into the system and participating in the course on a very regular basis. So we encourage you to be logging in and participating at least four different days a week. That way you can be up to date on everything. And when we talk about participation, we're referring to certain activities that Lucas is gonna be covering shortly. Activities such as posting to a discussion or possibly doing a quiz or taking a test in the system, uh, turning in an assignment uh, or a paper that you've done for the course. Uh, these activities are what is counted as participation as well as your attendance for the courses. So during the first week, it's important to go in and participate in your course. That is what really validates your attendance and gets you um, starting off on the right track with the university. Should you not participate and validate your attendance in that first uh, seven days of the course, you will be removed from the course um, and your transcript will be reflected as an NA, meaning never attended. And we don't want that to happen to anyone. Um, so that's why we're so excited you're here today to learn how to navigate the system and be successful. Throughout the course of um, the session, should you go 14 consecutive days without participating, um, you would be automatically withdrawn from the course and your transcript would reflect an AW. Again, we know that no one wants that to happen, which is why we encourage you to log in and be active and participating in your course on a very regular basis. Again, we think um, you know, every four times a week, four different, four different days a week, we think will keep you updated on and be on track to be successful. Um, so again, we, want, we know that no one wants to be removed, which is why we just wanna mention that uh, right away as Lucas will now go through the different ways to stay active and informed um, and ultimately successful in your courses this session. So we'll start off with finding your courses once you get logged in. There's two places that you can find your courses. They'll either pull up here on the main screen when you log in. Otherwise, you can go up here to the waffle, as we call it, and click, and it'll bring a drop-down box for you to where you can find your courses. If you'd like them to pull up on your main screen, you can click on the little thumbtack, and it will pin it to the home page for you. Once you get that all set up, you can go ahead and log into your course. We'll go here. And this is what your homepage will look like for your course. Everyone's may be a little bit different, but this is the generic format for how every class here online is set up. Um, we'll begin with finding your syllabus. You wanna click here on content. And once that gets loaded up, your syllabi should pour, pull up here and your professor will have everything, what they expect for the class, outcomes, all of your assignments that are due each week pulled up on here. And then as we move forward, everything here on the left-hand side is going to be a week-by-week -week play out, <clears throat> excuse me, of how everything's set up for your class and what will be due per week. So we'll start off with assignments. Clicking up here on the top header, if you click on assignments, it will pull up every assignment that's going to be due for your class throughout the next seven weeks. As you can see here, it will show every assignment due, whether you've submitted or not. So let's say we're going into week three case study and you need to submit this assignment. You just go ahead and click right here. And then you can go forward and add your file. 
And once that file has been completely, completely uploaded, you can go down here and you'll submit that. And then it'll bring up a submission ID letting you know that assignment's been submitted successfully. And that's how you'll know throughout the week. And once that assignment's been submitted, right here in the status bar, it'll tell you that it's been su submitted successfully. <clears throat> now, one of the most important things that I think of as a student within the online method is discussions. This is where your participation for the course is going to come from. You click up here on the top, boom. And every discussion should come up. You. Every instructor will have an area where if you have any questions, whether you want it to be group or to the professor itself, you can click right here and type in a new thread with any questions that you might have for the professor. Don't be afraid to post within this section. There's probably gonna be many students that are gonna have questions over content within the course. And at least this way, students can see your question and then the response from the professor. <clears throat> so beginning off with your classes that begin on Monday, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll probably have you begin with a personal introduction. This is probably one of the easiest ways for you to get participation credit for the week to mark your attendance. You'll just go in here and begin with posting your personal bio and whatever questions that the professor might ask of you. And then as you post, you'll be able to see all of your classmates' responses and be able to introduce yourself, welcome everybody into the course. And then throughout the next seven weeks, this is where you'll go every week for your participation. The professors are likely going to ask you specific questions. So we can just say, this is your first discussion due for the week. You can click on it and anything that the professor wants you to answer within that discussion, they will have posted right here up top. And this is what you'll use for your assignment throughout, or for your discussion throughout the week, I apologize. And as you get ready to post that discussion, you'll begin by starting a new thread typing in whatever the professor wants for your subject. Typically, it'll be week one, two, or three discussion with your name. And then you will either copy and paste from Microsoft Word or type in your discussion response here and post. And once you post, everybody in your class will be able to see your discussion and they'll be able to comment with any questions, concerns, or way just to engage within the class. This is how you'll get your participation credit throughout the week, as if you're sitting in class discussing items throughout that subject material. So moving on to any quizzes that you will likely have, you'll go up here and click on the quizzes tab. And any quizzes or tests that your professor has assigned will pull up in here and let you know typically when they're gonna be due. So we'll just go in here to this practice quiz, for example, and it will tell you when it is due and if there is a time limit, they will either have an unlimited amount of time or typically a two hour time frame where you can complete that test within that week. Um, typically, once you start the test, you will not be able to exit that until you're complete. So if for any reason you have to leave, make sure that your monitor is up and running so that way it doesn't log out on you because if it logs out, it will typically submit your exam for you and we don't want that to happen. And moving forward to grades. So as your grades are being updated by your professor, they will reflect upon this page it will bring up every assignment that is due. And then as the professor grades, it will bring up the total points awarded. And then it sh depending on how they have it laid out, it may or may not give you a total overall grade throughout the term for you. It's a nice way to be able to reflect and see how you're doing throughout your class. 
Next, we'll move to class list, which is right here. Once you click on this, it will bring up the list of everybody who is in your class, along with your instructor. So if for any reason you need to reach out to one of your individual classmates, you can click on it here, click on their name, and it will bring up a email that you can send out directly to whoever you need to reach out to. It's a nice convenient way if you have any questions and you don't want to post within that discussion area to be able to reach out one-on-one -on -one and have a private conversation. Throughout you'll see that there's a more tools tab. If you click right here it will bring up everything from your attendance, your class progress, rubrics and virtual classroom. We'll go down here to the class progress and it will bring up everything that you've done throughout the class as a check mark. It will bring up your grades received, all of your objectives of anything that's in progress, you've passed, all of your content and how many things you have completed and what you have left to do, <clears throat> all of your discussions that you've created, responded to, every assignment that you've submitted, grades, your quizzes and your checklist will be down here as well and any surveys that they'll have, along with your login history and how many days you've accessed your course. It's just a great way to go along and see how you're going throughout the class, if there's anything you might have missed. <clears throat> it's a very nice tool that we have that a lot of students don't know about. So if you have any questions over, you know, you might have missed something throughout your class, just refer to this page and you'll be able to reflect back and see how you're doing and if there's anything that you need to complete. Lucas, thank you so much for going through those different uh, tabs with us. Um, I do want to share, and Lucas, you're going to be a great resource to help with this, that all of our instructors use the system a little differently. So some instructors might do quizzes, some might not, some might um, use different things. So, so can you kind of share us with uh, a little bit more about those different tabs that not every tab will have all kinds of things that the instructor has set up? Yeah, absolutely. So if you have any questions, the professor might bring up within the syllabi about student resources that are available, not only to our Fayette campus students, but also to our center and online students. Um, by clicking student resources right here, not only can you find our academic catalog, you can also find our counseling and wellness services, disability services, <clears throat> all of our library sources, our online tutoring service, how to order your textbooks, student support, our tutor center and our writing center are all available to our online students as well. So if you have any questions, there is no need to fear that there's no help set out there for you. We've made this very accommodating for our online students so that they feel as if they're presently on our Fayette campus getting that assistance that they may or may not need. And then with this, we also do have our Brightspace app. You can download, download that on your phone. It'll basically be a mobile format for you to view everything that we've shown you here today. It's just a nice way if you're away from your computer, you can view your discussions. You'll receive any notification and announcements from your professor, along with live updates with your grades. So anytime you get a grade posted, the professor will post and you'll receive notification directly to your phone as well. It's just a nice way that if you're not at your computer and you want to do some discussions, you can do them from your phone or just check in and see how everything's going within your class. Lucas, we do have a couple questions online as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the first question is, what do I do if I missed an assignment and can, can I still submit that late? That would be up to your professor. If you miss a, an assignment, you'll likely want to reach out to your professor and 
let them know why the assignment wasn't able to be submitted. It's typically after the assignments are due, the submission box will close. But for any reason you weren't able to get it, you can reach out to your professor to see if you can submit that for late credit and they'll typically open that drop box back open for a certain amount of time in order for you to keep on track. Thank you. And then one more question mm -hmm. in regards to the tutoring. Is there any cost for tutoring? Nope, that is a completely free service to our students. Oh, hold on one more. I'm sorry. Um, the, if the assignment tab in my class is blank, does that mean I don't need to do anything in that tab? So let me take a little more clarification who answered or who asked that question. Um, if the assignment tab in your class is blank, it may mean that there are no assignments at this time, or it may mean that they are located somewhere else. Um, it just depends on your professor where they've loaded the information in your class, and usually they will tell you where your assignments are loaded. Correct, Lucas, or is that? Yeah, okay. if, there, if there's nothing within your assignments tab, <clears throat> The professor should have it clearly stated whether it be in their syllabi or the announcements page. They will let you know where you can find your assignments or how you're going to be submitting those, whether it be through your discussion board or if they won't have that assignment drop box open until a specific date. Those are all the questions we had online so far. I do want to share a little bit more about the free app that Lucas had mentioned. Uh, the app is available for free both for Android, uh, Android and uh, iOS systems. Um, it's just Brightspace Pulse mobile app. That is an app that a lot of students like to watch and monitor. Um, you can set up notifications uh, if, you're in, if your professor sends out a message or something like that. You can do that all through the app. So it's a great way. Uh, to stay connected as well. Another thing I want to share, and I'm going to put this in the chat box, is another resource that you can go back to as a student and you can access all kinds of different support, uh, videos, things like that for the system. Again, the, the main purpose of today is help, help you in becoming more knowledgeable uh, and thus comfortable in using the system to be successful this session. So, are there any other questions out there? We've had some great ones so far. Or Lucas, anything else that you've thought about in, as being a student that was helpful or important to you? Um, I would basically just say to make sure as an online student that you are posting within your discussions, that is gonna be one of the most vital assets <clears throat> throughout your seven weeks of the course, just to make sure that you're participating. A lot of our online students may or may not have to typically post within that class. So even if you post within that general course questions, it will count as participation for the week. So just make sure that <clears throat> anytime you have questions, or answering questions from the professor, make sure that you're going in every week and logging into your discussion posts and making sure that you're getting that credit needed. Um, as to your question, Amy, <laughs> as to your question, Amy, if you are taking courses throughout your My Math Lab. That is going to be one where you're typically not going to have anything posted throughout UIU Learn. That's where we typically have students log into UIU Learn every week and just posting something within that group course question area just so that they're staying active within UIU Learn um, so that they don't get an aid from that class. We also know um, that communication is gonna be so very important during this time. So as Lucas mentioned with assignments or questions, if you're unsure, reach out to your professor. Uh, email them. Um, they might have different information on their syllabus as well as other ways to contact them. But if you're unsure, communication is, is key. 
Uh, you can always also reach out to your academic advisor for questions you might have during this time or just resources as well. We had another question pop up. Let's see here. Yep, another question. Will I be having my same instructors or online instructors? So I believe you are going to be remaining with your same instructor. So whatever instructor you had in your class, you will now be having that exact same class, same classmates, everything's just moving online. Looks like the only one. I'm not sure why both of those went missing on mine. <laughs> All right, any other questions out there? Okay, well, I thank everyone for joining us today on this demonstration. Again, make sure to, to reach out, use your resources. Uh, there's no questions that are silly or stupid. We'd rather you ask than, than wonder. So we wish you the best of luck this session uh, and make sure to reach out if you need help. Thank you.